Hello, ladies. How's everybody doing? It is Saturday, and I had mentioned in a video, and I don't remember if it was the Friday FaceTime or on Thursday, but I had said that I would come in um, on Saturday at 3 o'clock. And that is Pacific Standard Time for me. So um, always remember that if I, if I specify a time, uh, calculate it to the uh, Pacific Standard Time. So, and then I had to sit there and think about it and say, well, what do I want to work on? You know, what do I want to do? And I remembered, well, I have a member, our dear Danielle, who's really wanting to... Um, get some ideas about tassels and so I thought I would throw together some items to say hey I'm uh, gonna make a tassel out of all of these bits and pieces and I wanted it to go with this um, purple jindy that I'm working on. So um, it's, you know, it's, it is, this is some of the components. So the purples can vary a little bit and it does have a little bit of pink and a little bit of green. So this one, although it doesn't look great on there, um, is actually a really pretty lavender in here. Um, sometimes I put this into them. This is, uh, and I don't have any more of it than just this. So I'm kind of sparing with it sometimes. You know, I look at it and I go, oh, I don't want it to all be gone, right? So I'm not seeing any hellos. And uh, if someone wants to um, private message me that they've said hello and just I'm not seeing it, then I'll restart. But um, sometimes it let, there we go. Misty Wells. Hi, sweetie. Do you hear me? It's, is have you commented and then I, I can see it or not? Because I don't want to start this unless I know that I can hear your guys' comments. So, but I have several. There we go. Yay! I have the camera real low because I wanted to be able to really let you see the, the fibers here, right? But I'm thinking what I usually do, um, my books are um, majority of the time nine inches tall. So, um, and then once you add which I'm going to be adding this and huh, this, right? Then, um, hi, Tasha. Okay, good. Everybody can see me and I can see you. So we'll just get rolling on this. So this is about an inch and then this comes up, right? Um, so if I, if I shorten this two inches, then I want, I'm going to make my strips about 14 inches long because I'm going to double what I'm going to decide, right? Isn't it? It's for it's for one of the purple jindies and the cl colors um, on my screen look like this looks blue. It's not blue. So I'm hoping on your screen it isn't isn't blue either. So let me measure out I can what I can do here to make this easy for myself is measure out 14 inches and then just use uh, this paper here as my guide and I don't have to be exact. In fact, what I will do when it's done is I will give it a little haircut anyways and get some ragged edges because I don't want it to be a flat edge, right? I don't want it to be a blunt cut. Hi, Maxine. So this is Saturday, three o'clock. I This is actually, um, this was on a package. I bought a product. I don't know what it was. It had to be probably some sort of linen. And this was wrapped around it and then tied. So, and it is uh, mesh, you know, the, uh, and I just need a bit of it. I don't need the whole width because not, not much that I put in here do I want to be that wide. Now, sometimes, yeah, see, this isn't going to tear. So this one isn't going to tear for me. But what I can do is cut it in half or fourths or whatever if I if I follow along this fold right maybe this is what you guys get to see is the side of this where I'm not sure what I'm doing and and uh, so 
there has to be there it is so if i open this up and then fold that back i'm going to cut it up the middle right there so still not going to be perfect but i have a bit of a, a fold line there follow and that'll be good enough if i could tear it i would that's what i would really love is if it had a, a, a ragged edge but you know, sometimes you just work with what situation gives you. So it used to be back in the day, I used to come on here on Saturday nights and do mixed media. I was not prepared for that. That's something I haven't wrapped my my head back around yet. So I thought, what's the next best thing? And I won't have much between them. So I decided on the tassel. Okay, so there's that length. Now, if I do that again, maybe. Yeah, it's got a good fold there. I can see it. You probably can't. And uh, even if, like I said, if it's not completely straight, that's okay too. But I want these to be really no no more than, than uh, an inch and a half at the most. Some of them I will make really narrow uh, when I get the opportunity, and some I will let stay like this. That's how we get our the texture so there we go so there's our two pieces of that so i'm going to set those there and i'm going to put this in, back in the basket so that i don't have to deal with it i already took this scarf right this soft this um oh you know i don't really know if it's silk and i don't know if it says on here it has some really beautiful uh sewing on it and it has uh it's it's uh, got even we're going to include this i've got this on the other edges that we're going to include into the tassel it does not have a label for me to tell you if it's silk or polyester or what it is, and I don't know well enough. But what I did was I tore, I cut off a chunk, and then I tore that chunk into three strips. So I have this one. Well, oh, there we go. And this one, see, and they all have a different color to them. Now, this one still ended up with some of that, and so that one probably won't end up in my tassel like that. But um, that's the things that, you know, I just don't know. So now I want to have both of these in there, right? That just adds to my tassel perfectly. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go over to my measurements. And I'm going to cut it. I'm going to put that back in the basket so I'm used for something else. So this one, if I go this way with one of them and that way with the other, and I do this because this would be better than a straight uh, blunt cut, although it's not necessary, uh, necessarily necessary. <laughs> and then I have these uh, two. Now these could have been longer because they kind of bulk up, but that's okay. I could always add more. So I'm going to set those aside. So now I'm going to add some of my, so this is how I do this normally, as I, as I just go and I grab it and make loops right and then that's my middle and i just cut these loops because i make a lot of tassel pits i make a lot of tassels so i had to come up with a way let's see how much of this we have we could do we could do four of these and then uh, just leave the edges uh, at different lengths cut those circles so if you have a question about how i'm managing this it's not um, being, uh, hi Angelique, hi Faith. Yes, time to make another tassel. I'll tell you, tassels are one of my favorite things. Uh, my husband uh, had collected a lot of yarn. So um, really, because I'm not crocheting anymore, it's really the only thing that I can do with it. Now this, this particular, there we go. Okay. So again, so I'm going to kind of grab my length and then I just go back and forth with it the best I can. My tassel is going to end up a little longer than um, I had planned because I end up like a chunky monkey journal, right? I just end up with a little extra each time I pull. Okay. So there's those. So I'm just grabbing little and I don't have to use them all in this one. I could do so many of those little chunks that I could end up making uh, three tassels and separate them out 
and just end up with more. So now here's some lace. This is, let's see what this is. Let's make sure. This is a three quarter inch lace. This is a really nice, nice width. And I'm not gonna do a ton. I'm only gonna do four of those because those will take over if I did too many. I'm gonna create angle. I'm not gonna stress about it because I can fix it and I may trim some off because I may end up just literally being too long. So there's those. My theme here is uh, the purple and white. Now this is kind of creamy, but it's gonna give me a good contrast. So what I'm gonna do, this is a cotton. This was a, a pair of little pants for uh, children, children's pants. And I'm going to make very narrow slits right here. This has the purple and the green, and I could have put some green in here, and it would have looked really nice, but I just, I think I'm going to do the purple and white with just, if, if seeing this, there was a stain right there, so that's an area that uh, I do not want to get inside of mine. So I'll cut around that and fix that later. But for right now, I'm trying to decide, I think there's three there, I think I definitely, four or five, so I'll do two more. Let me bring up the comments, sorry ladies. Maxine said, uh, Mary Griffiths joined, thank you. Um, Maxine says, glad you are showing this, I have only ever made one. There's so many different ways to make them. Hi Mary, Mary says to Maxine, me either Maxine, I need to try, yeah. Tasha says, I love making tassels, but ran out of journals and planners to put them on. <laughs> Hi Mayor Sue. Yeah, that is a dilemma, isn't it? You know what my daughter does? My daughter and I create uh, created a little fun thing, which is what we call uh, uh, fringy friends. And so we make these and she puts them on purses and backpacks. And they'll have like the, the almost like the dread looking yarn with the beads. And, and uh, so it's really kind of a boho, bohemian, you know, thing. And so uh, we had, I need to probably copyright that term or something because it's going to be gone if I if I blinked. But um, we we had come up with that idea because of she's 25 and that's I had made her a couple and she just thought that her friends would like it and so we had been you know toying with that idea. Okay, so those will go up there. This will go back into it. Now I have this yarn or I'm sorry lace, and I've got to decide if it adds to it enough. And I really think I just need more purple right now. So I'm going to wait and see if I need to add white. Because what I have is this. This is a really good one. It's one of my favorites. This type of yarn I've worked with actually creating um, a blanket for my mother-in-law. And I loved it then and I love it for this stuff. You do have to be careful with it. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Madison and I don't use it in the fringy friends anymore because of this. Unless you tie knots in it, it just starts to completely unravel, which if you're putting it on um, a fringy friend, which is you're putting it on your purse or your backpack, then that's not good because uh, the wear and tear it just starts to disintegrate into a fuzzy mess. So there's those. And I have this purple, which is nice and narrow, and this is a really good color. This matches more what I'm doing, this blue purple versus the pink purple, but I want I want it all in there. I want it all. So I'm gonna grab. Okay, so I haven't done it this way before you guys. Normally I come to the camera with, with the um, yarns already cut and just show you how I connect it all. So this is the first time that I'm coming in and saying, this is how I decide, um, you know, what types of, of uh, yarns and and the color combinations and the different types of fabric and how I got them and how I measure it. So this is kind of fun. This is like a behind the scenes because for a long time I was uh, selling a lot of tassels. Now uh, it's slowed down a bit and uh, I don't make them as much, but the tassel kits anyways for sure. I, I, I 
slow down. So I got to decide when I put in it together if I need more of this. So I'll keep this where I can find it. This one I want some in, and I could have um, added for sure. You know, um, let's see. This one is kind of a lighter color. I think I'll add some of this. And this is called plastic canvas yarn, right? So this is the kind of different things that you can, uh, let's say you find this at a garage sale or you find this at second hand store or one of your grandchildren had, had been wanting to do it and then they got bored and they don't want to do it anymore, right? Tell them, give it to me, I will use it in a tassel. So this is just the kind of uh, cross, cross referencing, cross using that you can do with the different crafts, right? That was, the, the item was intended for a different craft but here we can find a way to fit it into junk journaling. I just think that's fabulous. That's one of my favorite things about all of this. Okay, so my pile's getting big there. I want to do, I put this one away and I want to do this one. And this is, um, uh, we call it eyelash lace. Almost everybody I know calls it eyelash lace. If you're looking for it to purchase it, it's actually called fun fur. So if you wanted to, uh, find it, your best bet is to search fun fur. Okay, so let's get a few rows of this, maybe six. Like I said, I kind of hoard this one because it's my favorite. I found this at a uh, garage sale and I don't know if I'll ever be able to get it again. So most of my items are very unique and honestly, once I uh, use them up, I don't know that I will ever have that exact item again. Okay, so there's that. So now this is what's handy, and I I wish I had more things like this. I might try to find it, but right now I'm just going to make sure that I do what it did, and which is doing this. Right. Okay, so I'm going to save these out, and I'm going to save this out, putting everything else away. This is the waistband of that. Um, little pants and I'm wondering now that I'm looking at it wondering 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 if this could end up getting altered into a closure don't you think that if I got it just right at the edge the ruffle there and then maybe frayed it a little bit that this could end up being possibly a closure for a journal I think I'll, I'll show you what I mean uh, once I get this turned off because it's just like an OCD thing. It's like, okay, I've decided that's what's going to have to happen. So I have to do it now. I can't just stop and do something else. I don't have a ton of OCD, but when it hits me, it hits me hard. Thank goodness that's not big things like, you know, life altering things, especially annoying things. Okay. Now, See, it would need to be cleaned up a little bit, but let me show you, for example, this isn't this isn't something I would use it on, but for example, what I'm wondering is if it's too wide this way, which it is, would it work as a closure this way? And it would, look at that, ladies. Wouldn't that be cute? And if I attached it here and then this came off, right? And then boom, now not on this fabric, but in general, just in general. So there's, a, oh, I gotta look at Oh, you guys, I've just been jabbering and not even looking up here. I'm so sorry. Okay. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Shelly. Mary says, hi, Sue and Shelly. Uh, Shelly says, how is everyone? Hi, Jody. Well, 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 hi there to you too, young lady. Hi, Wendy. Um, let's see. We have uh, everyone saying hi to each other, which I love. Hi, Cindy and Joanne and Faith. Yeah, wouldn't that make a cute closure, Faith? I'm thinking, I mean, and then the part that's um, actually, the, there is a, a seam on here, normally anyways, right here. That's where I could sew it and then put a really cute button on top of it. I like that idea. And I think that I could see the thing is, is I could do it on a book. It doesn't have to be fabric. I could use um, the crocodile and put a hole through there and use an eyelid or a brad to attach it and then glue um, what I want on the top, and then it would just come around like this as a closure. So that's an idea. And this was a size six uh, children's pants. So, but let's say that it was bigger than what we wanted. You cut it, sew it back together, but make sure your seam is the part that's facing backwards, right? And then attach it. So it wouldn't be, it, 
because if I wanted to make it go this way, I could do that too by, by shortening it. But anyways, just another wonderful idea of what to do with things that are left over from other things. Okay, now let's get this tassel rocking and rolling because uh, I'm excited. So this is what we've got so far, but you know what? Once we fold this all in half, this thing is just gonna get bulky. So let me do this. Let me, I, what I like to do, uh, if I'm not in a rush, sometimes I'm in a rush and I can't be so specific, but what I like to do is I like to spread these out so that when I put them together, they're going to end up uh, in a different place. I don't want them all next to each other, right? So then I'm going to uh, throw these in there randomly. And I don't usually, I mean, not every tassel I do do I uh, necessarily go to this level. But if I'm here and we're doing it together and you're not, I'm not showing you to do it um, you know, fast and mainstream and bolt and uh, what is it uh, when you're doing something over and over and uh, large amounts of them? I'm not trying to show you how to do it that way. I'm just trying to show you that you do need to separate these out. I've seen them where they're together. They look beautiful too. It all depends on what you want out of it, I guess. But this is this is one of the ways that that I like to do it. I like to have the pieces stand out apart from. I do think this is possibly going to see a couple of spots I, I didn't catch the, the circle to cut. <laughs> Let's see. Now I want this, I want these edges not to be straight. I would have cut them if they ended up straight. So there's no reason for me to try to make sure that they end up straight. Does that make sense? You know, um, even, not straight, a straight line at the end because I would have cut them like a haircut to get the blunt edge softened. I actually used to cut hair, not for a living. Uh, when I was young, I had to learn to cut hair because we were poor and my brothers and sisters uh, to have their hair not in their bangs not in their eyes and stuff I had to learn to cut hair so I cut hair and then I ended up as I got older you know cutting my husband's hair and but uh, my thumb I can't do it anymore I can't use scissors in that way and so that's sad but that's what I what I mean by the cutting of the hair and how you wouldn't unless you're going for a blunt cut usually you would kind of so let's do this one in here I hope this isn't boring. I don't mean to be not boring, but I really think that if you can get these spread out so that there's a little bit um, of everything in different places that you will like it better. But there is something to be said for the ones that the chunks are in there. Like there's ones where you'll just see this whole chunk. And I think those are beautiful too. I just haven't made those in made it well so or you know to where i liked it so i don't do it that way but there's so many different ways to do everything that everything is beautiful just trying to go a little faster okay okay so now remember we wanted to have this in here so i'm going to bring this all the way up here because i don't want to have this so long that i feel like i wish i, I had to cut it off I'd rather cut off this end. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. These are just the little tips, ladies, that uh, it comes with experience, right? It comes with knowing that I, I am gonna to have to cut some of these off because it is gonna end up a lot longer than I had originally planned. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, here's my ring. I am gonna pick this all up. I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna stuff it through this ring, okay? Let me bring up the comments. Let's see. Jody says, um, I know it's been forever. I missed you. Guys, I missed you too. Nicole, how are you? Nice purples. Thank you. Maxine says, not boring educational. Hi, Tracy Lander. So that is awesome. Thank you. I, I, I truly, uh, I'm hoping that, you know, uh, the point of what the tediousness of that helps a little bit. So now I do have long edges here and I am going to go ahead and start doing my haircut. It's going to get done again, but at this point, this will be difficult for me to put through if I don't get a little bit more of a grasp on this part. So that part's now been cut off. Those will be snippets for other things. So this does not go in the garbage. This goes in a purple snippet bag or something, right? Or white. You don't throw that away. So now I'm going to try really hard to show you without looking like a clumsy oaf on how I go ahead and just get all of this stuff through that ring. 
because there's really no uh, like perfect way to do it. I, I got a hold here so that I'm not pulling one more than another um, to a certain degree and trying to just move it through. And when I start to feel that move, I go back and, and fix it because otherwise I'll end up having pulled too much of one or two things through and uh, mess it up even more than I probably will naturally anyways, because it's not an easy process to, to get all that through this. So here's my ring. Okay, so I want my ring right and right and center. Now I haven't cut the other side of this, so let's do that. Let's get our, our trim on. This one is going to be a fat baby. Now I kind of I wish I didn't have to cut that, but I do. But I really liked how that tore down like that. Okay, now, so we have one that has definitely gotten out of whack, so I can bring this up here. and add it in on top and it'll be fine. This one is being pulled in or has been pulled too much. So I'm gonna see, is it this one, it's this one. Okay, so I fixed that one. So then again, it's not a big deal. Pull the whole thing out if it's annoying. If it's not gonna go where you want it to go and it gets in your way and it's a hassle, pull it out, it's no big deal. There's enough in there to keep you going. Now. This is the uh, base of the tassel. You have your hardware, right? But you didn't have, we don't have to have this part. I have attached them to things uh, just through this, if, I, if that's what I want to do. But, so this is the hardware, fundamental hardware of the tassel in this case. And you don't have to even do that. We could do other things, but that's not part of this tassel. This tassel now has its uh, components and its hardware. Now I have to find one more piece and then we'll attach this and make it sturdy and show you. Now, I think it has to be strong. I can't just go grab it, one of the yarns and hope it'll be strong. It has, it has to be strong. Like I have to pull on this like nobody's business. Let me see who's throwing up all the hearts. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna use, uh, this one may be more purpley. I don't know. I like the white. Okay, I'm going to use this one. Okay, if I don't know how long it needs to be. There may be a formula for that. I don't know it, but this is what we're going to do. I'm going to hold this in my hand, and I want this to be pulled down tight. I don't want this to be like this. Okay. I think that's I think that's my girl Jennifer throwing up parts. Hi, hi, girly girl. So I want that to be like that, and I'm going to hold all of this down here tight. Okay, see that? I'm going to take this and I'm going to leave this end sticking up. This is a macrame move or knot or whatever. And I've been using it when I used to make macrame and it made sense to me to use it on tassels. So that's why I do this. I'm going to take this part and I've got my fingers on it all the way down here and I'm going to loop this up. So now I've got a loop right here. See that loop? And I've got an end right here. I'm going to take this and my thumb is on it and I'm going to start wrapping this around the top. I've still got my, my flap. Okay. But I want this to be really tight. I just want it. I want the, and I don't want it wide. It can be really, it can be really, uh, you know, skinny because it's all pulled taut. That's fine. But I want it pulled really tight because I want this only this little area bubbled up up here for me. That's the way I'm doing this one. It could look another way. It would be fabulous. This is just this type of task. I just want you to want to go, no, I've seen them look like this and that's fine too. It is fine. Everything's fine. So now I'm, I'm going to try to get this. I got it all wrapped in my hand just right. I'm just trying to get a very secure, tight. Ugh, my finger slipped, of course. I still got it, but my finger slipped. Okay, so now I'm just going to continue and continue. And I got to decide at some point, how far do I want this band? I could take it all the way down here if I wanted to, right? I could leave it right where it is. I could have made it less than that. It's in the it's in the aesthetics of it because right now it would be a secure um, situation. But I'm gonna go down just a little bit more. I'm gonna go down about there. Now, you see, we still have our loop that my finger was in. This is our loop. 
this is the end of our, we're going to put it through that loop. This is what we were wrapping around. This is the loop we had down here, and this is the flap that we have up here to pull. Okay, so this is tight. Now I'm going to put my finger on that because I don't want this to pull. I don't want this to pull anywhere yet. I want to start pulling that loop up. Okay, it looks like then it pulls it in there. Then you cut this off, and you can leave this one if you want. I might just because it kind of needs it. I normally don't have them that long and I normally cut them off, but so this was this was part of how we knotted the top. The rest of the knot is underneath there, which leaves us, this would be, do you know when you tie a knot around something, this would be what you would have to do. And it wouldn't be bad either. Ladies, do it. It'll look fabulous. But this is what you would have to do. And then you would have to wonder, if I cut those too short, am I, am I, is it going to fall apart? Is the whole thing just going to come apart? In this situation, nothing is going to be able to come undone. That's why I created them this way. And then what we can do is you take and you put this on here. 